It's been long expected that Ruben Amorim would eventually manage one of Europe's biggest clubs, guiding Sporting to their first league title in 19 years, and his side will likely win it again this year, which only adds to his exceptional CV. Sporting recognised Amorim's talent early on, famously paying a huge release clause to acquire him after his blistering start at SC Braga. Despite being relatively unproven at the tender age of 35 years old, they bet on his tactical mind, man management skills and unwavering dedication as both player and manager. Based on the job he's done so far to transform sporting, Amorim could just be the new special one. But who is he and why was he the absolute favourite for the Man United job? This is the remarkable rise of Ruben Amorim. Forced to retire early in 2017 due to injury at the age of 32, he quickly embarked on a new path as a coach, taking his first steps into management in the 2018-19 season with third division side, Casapia. Six months later, however, he resigned after the club was sanctioned for his failure to possess the required coaching license. Amorim then rejected the chance to manage Benfica's B team, despite being a fan of the club as a boy. Instead, he opted for Braga's B team, where he believed he could exercise more control. But in a rapid turn of events, Amorim was handed his opportunity to manage the senior side after Braga had sacked Ricardo Sapinto in December 2019 after a poor run of form. His appointment turned their season around completely. Between January and February 2020, his side played Porto twice, Sporting twice and Benfica once, a run of games about as tough as you can get in Portugal. But Braga won all five matches. In a matter of months, Amorim took Braga from 8th to 3rd place in the league, remained undefeated domestically and secured his first trophy as a manager by winning the Portuguese League Cup. It was a sign of things to come for the young manager, leading to increasing comparisons between him and famous fellow countryman, Jose Mourinho. Interestingly, Amorim himself credits Mourinho as an inspiration for his career, even taking the opportunity to meet the special one in Manchester back in 2018 to enhance his knowledge. He shares a similar tenacity and underdog spirit with Mourinho, qualities that have remained with him throughout his managerial adventures. Sporting have come a long way since Amorim's appointment, considering the challenging state the club was in when he first arrived. To put the transformation into context, Sporting have won more points than any other side in Portugal since Amorim's appointment four years ago, averaging 2.38 points per game in 136 league games. Under manager Marshall Kaiser, Sporting had started the 2019-2020 season with a 5-0 defeat in the Portuguese Super Cup which came at the hands of bitter Lisbon rivals, Benfica, whom they hadn't finished above in the league for 11 consecutive years. After only two wins from five games, Kaiser was dismissed and replaced by Leonel Pontes, Sporting's former under-23 coach. Soon after, however, he too was dismissed after zero wins from four league games. Jorge Manuel Rebelo Fernandes, also known as Silas, stepped in next. He also proved underwhelming in his 28 games in charge, winning 17 but losing 10. By March 2020, Sporting astonishingly were already searching for their fourth manager of the season and wasted no time snatching up Amorim less than three months after he had assumed control of Braga's senior team. Controversially, Sporting paid a huge 10 million euro fee to bring him to Lisbon, the third highest fee paid for a manager at the time, and a staggering amount for a Portuguese club to dish out. It was an even bigger risk, given the strained relationship between the club's board and its fans, many of whom saw the appointment as an example of the board's reckless financial management. However, this time, the board was right. He was unable to prevent Sporting from falling outside top three by the end of his first half season, ironically finishing just below the club he'd helped do so well earlier in the season. However, his first full season in charge would shake Portuguese football to its core. Sporting went into the 2020-21 season, having not won the league since 2002. Having lost star player Bruno Fernandes to Manchester United just weeks prior to his arrival, Amorim reconfigured his team, trusting younger, hungrier players and nurturing their potential with his strong man management. Pedro Porro, now at Tottenham, was loaned from Manchester City, while Joao Palhinha and Matheus Nunes ran the midfield. 
important squad players like Thiago Thomas and Nuno Mendes were also promoted from their academy. But above all, it was the young Pedro Gonçalves who emerged as the face of a Moran revolution and a testament to his faith in the youngsters whose performances would culminate in the club's first league title in 19 years. The international limelight was now on Armorim, but he had made the choice to continue at Sporting, saying that there was still unfinished work to be done with the club's ongoing project. And Marin began his second full season at Sporting by winning the Super Tassa. Highlights of that season also included qualifying for the Champions League round of 16 for the first time since 2009, and Amarin becoming the fastest manager to win 50 games in the Premier Liga. He had also led his side to their first away victory against Benfica in six years with a 3-1 win and then a month later won his third consecutive League Cup in a 2-1 win against the same opponents. Back in Europe, his team were never expected to make it past City in the last 16, but in the Taça de Portugal, Portugal's most prestigious domestic cup competition and the equivalent of England's FA Cup, they were knocked out in the semi-finals by Porto. As of now, that competition is the only trophy in Portugal that Amarim has yet to win. By the end of the season, Sporting had matched their previous season's 85-point tally in the league, but this time they finished as runners-up to an extraordinary Porto side, whose record-breaking 91 points tally still stands as the highest in the history of Portuguese football. The following 2022-23 season was Amarim's biggest disappointment yet, as Sporting finished outside the top three and failed to win a single trophy. As with all overperforming teams outside Europe's top five leagues, Sporting had faced an exodus of talent during the pre-season summer transfer window. Mendes had already left for Paris Saint-Germain the year before, while Paulina and Nunes departed for the Premier League. Furthermore, the club opted against making Pablo Sarabia's loan deal permanent, resulting in the departure of their top goalscorer and main goal threat from the previous season. In the Europa League, Sporting made it all the way to the quarter-finals, following a memorable victory over Arsenal on penalties. But after falling short of the club's objectives for the season, Amorim took responsibility and offered to give up his position after a meeting with the club's president and sporting director. Despite this, the club maintained their trust in him, with their president openly acknowledging him as one of the best coaches in the world and attributing their failure to meet their goals, to poor season planning, specifically pointing out the departure of Nunes as a contributing factor. To amount any sort of title challenge, Amorim had to address a critical problem at the club, Sporting's consistent struggle of being outscored by their big three rivals. Enter Victor Giocaresh. After a brilliant season in which he almost single-handedly fired Coventry City to Premier League promotion, Sporting splashed out a club record transfer fee of €20 million Euros for the Swedish striker last summer. Last season saw him score 21 times in 46 English second-tier appearances, a tally he's already surpassed this season in the Portuguese league from nearly half the number of games. Within Amorim's favoured 3-4-3 formation, Gyukaresh plays as the number 9, with the creative Gonçalves and Trincao alongside him on the wings. While a lot of their build-up play comes centrally, sporting strength is picking the right time to feed the ball into wide areas, causing damage with their pace and creativity in the front three. Much of Sporting's build-up play is also reliant on their three central defenders carrying the ball upfield. As a result, his side also lead the league in number of direct attacks. Much of the beauty of this season's sporting is their variations in attacking build-up. In their games against Porto, Benfica and Braga, they enjoyed less possession on each occasion, but were still able to utilise their pace and attack with fast breaks. This shows that Amarim can mix up his team style based on the opponent. With Sporting topping the league and looking likely to win their third title in five years, it's easy to see why such a young coach like Amarim would attract a club like Man United.